Hi everyone, this is Ryan from Uncanny Owl, and I want to talk about the breadcrumbs feature that we just added to the Uncanny Learn Dash Toolkit. So right now I'm signed into a test site and I'm on the settings page for the toolkit. And you can see the very first entry here is the breadcrumbs module, and it's currently turned on. There are some settings in there for the module. I want to come back to those and start out by talking about how to actually use the breadcrumbs as a short code uh, for users. So I've just opened up a sample topic and I want to talk about some of the things that are on the page now. So right now, this is a very, very bare site. Um, no styling whatsoever. It's pretty much a theme out of the box. And you can see what most themes will do with Learn Dash pages. Like up here, they won't be able to see the relationships within Learn Dash. And when they can't see the relationships, they can't build the hierarchy where breadcrumbs would normally be displayed. So what they do is they just see the home page as the parent, which isn't what you would normally want at all. So right now I have the breadcrumbs element enabled and I want to show you how it's set up on the page. So you can see here it is actually performing a lookup for this sample topic. And what it's doing is it's it's building a hierarchy from the home page down. So it would start at home and the next thing in the list would be either a course archive or some kind of dashboard page. This is something you can define and absolutely should define. If it's left blank though, then it goes to the course archive page, which every Learn Dash site has, but most people aren't aware of it. And it's difficult to style, and you probably don't want a lot of users going there. But at the same time, we need to take them somewhere. So if you were to click this, it would show a list of any courses that are created in the system. And you can see this is not very helpful at all in this format. So you probably don't want users going there, but it does at least give them a front end to the different courses that are available. What we normally do, though, is use some kind of dashboard shortcode. So it could be something custom, it could be the LD profile shortcode that's included with Learn Dash, or it could be the course grid or something else. Um, however you want users to get to a list of courses and then into courses from there. So that can be specified. Next in the list, we've got the name of the course. And then after that, we've got the lesson. And what we don't do is go down to the topic level. So if you go down to the quiz level and it's associated with a topic, then you would see that. The reason we don't show everything in the breadcrumb link is because we've seen a lot of Learn Dash sites where titles for courses, lessons, and topics tend to be too long. So since we can't link to them anyway, like it's the page that you're already on, we just omit it from the breadcrumbs. So that's why we, why we made that decision, because in a lot of cases, it's just too long. We don't like the wrapping. If you try to include it in a title bar, it could be too wide. So we try to cut down on space as much as possible. And as a general best practice, it is a good idea to try to limit the length of your course lesson topic and other names. So you can see I've got it here in the page as a short code and it's also set up in the sidebar as a short code. So let me go and edit that so you can see exactly how it's set up. So when I edit this topic, then all that I've set up there is the short code. <clears throat> we don't really need that text. So that short code is what's populating the list of breadcrumb links. And I'm using the same thing over in, in appearance, if we check under widgets, if I go to that, then there's just a text widget here, which just has the same short code. So that's how those get populated. So if I go back out, <clears throat> sorry, I'm going to go back to the topic. Then this is the short code, this is the short code. But of course, it's not really ideal to have it either here because it's it's too low, it's inside the topic. And over here, it's probably going to end up being too wide to work well in a sidebar. So what we generally recommend is to change a theme header file or other template where you think the breadcrumbs would make more sense. Here what we could do is do a template override for this particular element of this theme. Um, where we put in in the code for the breadcrumbs. So to call our code, the, the information's on in the knowledge base as well as on the blog post. 
Um, so basically you need code in there that just says, you know, to call the breadcrumbs. Um, so it's uo underscore breadcrumbs and then open bracket, closed bracket. And that's all you need in the PHP file. You just do need to change the template PHP file wherever it's appropriate. And if you put that code in there and turn on the module for breadcrumbs in the toolkit, then that will take care of showing the breadcrumb links wherever you want them. In a lot of cases, it probably does make sense to show them elsewhere. You can use the short code, but in a lot of situations, it's not the right approach. Anyway, you can do that. That's how that works. Now what I want to do is talk about some of the settings that are available. So let's start with an easy one first. We'll go back to the settings. And the first thing we can change is the separator. I'm just going to jump down to here first because that one's really easy. So if we go back to the topic, you can see right now, so we've got the, these characters there. And that's what's what's there by default. But what I could do is I could say, I don't want that. Maybe I want um, single greater than symbol. So I'm going to save that. I go back over here. I click on refresh. And you can see it's changed to that. So that's a really easy way to do it. Maybe you want something else in there too. Maybe you want, um, you could do a dash or something. Maybe it's a couple of dashes, something like that. Whatever you want to do is fine there. And the nice thing is that it does accept HTML as well. So what's, what's a nicer approach is you could go over to Font Awesome or something like that. Now, we have the libraries loaded. What I can do here is say I want this arrow character. What I can do then is I can just copy in this HTML that's going to display the font awesome arrow. So I'll paste that in there instead. I'll save that. And then if I go over to the test topic again and refresh that, you can see now I'm showing font awesome arrows. And that looks a little better. You can see over here. And this is the problem anything too wide, like we just have to watch width. Um, wrapping is an issue for a lot of uh, longer course lesson and topic names. So that's again another reason why you might want not want to include it in the sidebar. Now let's go back to the dashboard because this is uh, one that we tend to use on all the sites we develop. So I'm just going to use a dashboard page and here's a dashboard page right here. So I'm going to use that dashboard page and I'm going to call it my courses. So this defines what the title is going to be in the breadcrumb links. So this is the link after home and this defines where that link will go. So if I click on save settings now, then I go back over here. So right now you can see it says courses and it links to the course archive page. If I refresh that, so now it says my courses, we change that title. And when I click it, there we go. So here we have a very basic dashboard and you can see again here, links to home here. It's showing up because again, we don't go down to the page that it's on right now. Um, so it's just showing home because that's all that's in the trail at this point. It's there's only one level up from the dashboard and that's home. So that's essentially how the breadcrumbs work. I hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching.